Okay, this is going to be the review of the Orville, Episode 1, Old Wounds. Now, I was never a Seth MacFarlane fan, but I didn't know he was a big Star Trek fan because I never watched Family Guy. And apparently he, he's a big-time Star Trek fan. He put Star Trek and Family Guy all over the place. I saw one Family Guy episode, and it was the one where Brian pooted all over the place and made uh, is really a lousy episode. But it was funny. But... What Seth MacFarlane has done for Star Trek fans is awesome. I think it is better than Star Trek Discovery. So the show starts out, he uh, starts out and he finds his wife cheating with uh, Rob Lowe. Only it's a blue guy called Derilio. He's an alien that uh, has orgasms through his forehead. Yeah, it's pretty gross and funny. So anyway, the Admiral from the Titanic calls him in and says, guess what? Uh, you're going to give you a ship because we need captains real bad. And the first joke is, could I have one of these mints? But oh no, that's a marble. And there's a lot of jokes like that. Uh, he meets his uh, buddy from high school or something and says, I need you to be my navigator. They go to the holodeck and they have a real funny holodeck scene with this guy where he, where the red-headed guy kills him. Of course, it's a holodeck. And that's another. That's a navigator there. He, he likes to drink a lot, apparently. Basically, this episode, they meet the crew and they introduce the characters. It's really funny. I'm sure you've seen the episode and you know what the jokes are. So he finds out that his wife who he found cheating, which divorced a year earlier, is the first officer. But later on in the episode, we find out that his wife, Kelly, helped get him the captaincy because she felt real bad about cheating on him. And actually, we find out that Rob Lowe excretes a pheromone, and she really can't control herself to jump in bed with him. And in fact, uh, Mercer there jumps in bed with him too in episode 8, uh, Cupid's Dagger. is really hilarious. But meanwhile, we're introduced to the crew. This is a Data character, and uh, he's actually a good robot, really a lot like Data. I'm real surprised. And there's a Wharf character, and there's a real strong young lady character. The first problem they encounter is they're going to deliver supplies to this hospital ship, but they find out that they're, they want to be protected from the krill. Because the Krill wants to steal this weapon. It's a time acceleration weapon. It accelerates time vastly. That's the theory and episode for plot for this episode. But the jokes are sprinkled in. And the jokes in the first episode seem a little out of place because it goes from joke to drama and back and forth. And it's a little jarring, but it was still highly enjoyable. And so they're going to need to be rescued uh, because the Krill is after them to get that device which accelerates time. But it only accelerates time in a little bitty area. So what they do is they take a seed and accelerate the time, but it has to be activated by that device. So the krill want to steal that device. They steal it. They give it to them willingly. <laughs> and uh, then what happens is that they have seat belts on this shuttle. This is how they defeat this guy jumping on him. And they slam on the brakes, and the krill gets slammed, and they jump on him and take control of the situation. And then he says, okay, here's the acceleration device. I'll give it to you, krill, and go ahead. And here's the launch code, and they give him the launch code. Another joke he has was, move, move to the center of the screen, would you? My wife thought that was hilarious. She laughed for like three minutes. So the show ends because the krill accelerate the device and the tree grows and blows up the ship. It was a really funny episode mixed in with drama. When we watched it a few weeks ago, we really enjoyed it. Enjoyed it a lot more than Star Trek Discovery. Now, if you look at Star Trek Discovery, the, the initials are STD, and I really think that Discovery is trying to shove disco down our throat to make us call it disco, which I'm fine with. I'll call it Star Trek Disco, because I don't want to call it STD, really. In history, you know, you want to look at it happily. And hopefully they'll give us some good stuff like, uh, you know, Seth MacFarlane's done here, stuff we can be happy with and watch again and again and be happy with. I've watched the Orville many times in repeats, and I've barely watched Star Trek Discovery in repeats, to be honest with you. What do you think? Comment and subscribe. I'm going to make other reviews of all Star Trek science fiction shows, especially Wait, the Orville and uh, Discovery. Favor, Comment and subscribe. Trek Genius over and out. Well, not really, but it means a lot to someone, I'm sure. Also, if you like what you just watched, you can see even more content on the Fox Now app. Don't say I ever gave you nothing.